Hi, my name is Josie. This is my Star Wars Josie. Hey everyone and welcome to All Come On Josie. I'm Josie and you're here for yet another Force Friday where I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things in all of the galaxies and universes far and wide, near and far, and a long, long time ago, Star Wars. And I'm really gonna get into The Force Awakens with this now that the film has been out for a couple weeks and more people have seen it, I can get a little spoilery and talk about how things affected me. So, get ready everyone. We're jumping to hyperspace. Hey everyone, I'm here with my buddy BB-8 who is loud and proud. What up buddy? <laughs> We're here to talk about Star Wars. And before I get started, I have my friend Brittany here to talk about why she feels Star Wars is important. BB-8 loves Brittany. Well, I think Star Wars is important because it's like a really big pop culture thing. And I think it was really impressive that it's spanned over so many generations. Like my mom's seen every generation of Star Wars movies. And hopefully she'll live to see the ninth one. And coming out of the movie, I felt really, like, included, like, a part of something. And it gave me a feeling that no other movie really has. And especially to have a character like Rey in the movie, it's really inspirational for me and, like, for other girls, especially, like, young girls, to think that they can, you know, be as important and, like, a main heroine and do anything they want to. Hold still, your antenna's bent. There we go. Alright, so for me, Star Wars has been part of my life literally since birth. Uh, I was born in 1983. I'm a oldie, as my younger friends like to say. Um, the first film I ever saw in theaters was Return of the Jedi uh, when I was a brand new fetus baby. And it, uh, it I mean, I've loved Star Wars since then. I mean, it was kind of ingrained in my brain from the start because I have older siblings who were born in the early mid 70s and they both really liked Star Wars and um you know Star Wars is something that defied like really gender stereotypes and stuff like that for us like it didn't matter if you were boy or girl everyone liked Star Wars uh there was something for everyone in our family and for me I always felt like an outsider because you know, being autistic, but I wasn't even diagnosed autistic for quite some time, not until I was an adult, pretty much. And so, um, for me, I always felt like I was out of place and I didn't know why. And Star Wars gave me a place where I could exist and not feel so isolated and alone because Star Wars had all sorts of different characters from all sorts of different planets in this complex galaxy and really the one that I identified with most was Princess Leia because you know she had so much that she went through and had to to hold this this tough exterior and and be so strong and she had to keep up with the boys and she never really was just a romantic interest there was always something more about Leia and even though she tended to be pushed to the side for the male storylines and and she wasn't like per se, you know, the Luke, she still was so important and she is so important. I mean, what is Star Wars without Princess Leia? And for me, I just, I really looked up to her and I looked up to Han Solo a lot because, you know, Han Solo reminded me of my dad and I'm a huge Harrison Ford fan because of my dad. And I mean, I have a giant Indiana Jones tattoo. In Han Solo, I am reminded of my dad, you know, in the way he talks or things he says or some of his mannerisms. Um, my dad would be the same age as Harrison Ford now. So even seeing The Force Awakens, it's like, what would my dad look like now? What would he be like now? You know, he was always like my Indiana Jones or my Han Solo. So for a long time, it was hard for me to watch Star Wars because I miss my dad too much. But now it's like, it's a way for me to remember him and to to have him around and and so Star Wars will always be super important to me because it's a piece of who I am it's it's so much more than a film series to me uh, back on the subject of Princess Leia Carrie Fisher was just such a huge part of me growing up Princess Leia and Carrie in general meant so much to me because um, you know I always felt different immensely I always felt like 
a complete outsider and Carrie was always so open and talking about mental illness and talking about addiction and talking about things that she struggled with and when you're young and dealing with mental illness you don't really have anyone who wants to openly talk about it for me especially everyone kind of wanted to quiet it like oh she's so weird well just try and act normal it was always a thing of of being normal and what Carrie taught me was it's okay to be weird it's okay to be strange it's okay because that's who you are and the people who can't embrace you for that fuck them like and to get that message so young it was so important and crucial to me growing up and I feel like if I didn't have someone in my life that young who knows who I, I would be now I definitely wouldn't be comfortable in my skin and Carrie is is so important and still to this day such an amazing person and I honestly I feel like she's one of the reasons I'm still here today and just Princess Leia and Carrie Fisher I mean even Carrie Fisher and freaking Blues Brothers just Carrie Fisher her books her 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 work anything she does has just influenced me in so many ways and I am forever fucking grateful for Carrie Francis Fisher what was that <laughs> We have a special guest. Uh, my dear friend Whitney is on and she is here to talk about Princess Leia and Carrie Fisher and I mean the importance of these wonderful women um, and you know Star Wars in her life. Take it away Whitney. What do you think BB-8? Yeah. Star Wars. People who know me know that I love Star Wars and they know that I have an extra amount of love for General Leia Organa Solo. Mm -hmm. Star Wars means so much to me um, for a number of reasons and I'll try to condense it for time's sake. Um, Star Wars was my childhood and they quickly folded over into my adult life. The writing is absolutely brilliant. Some of the greatest lines that we hear today constantly are products from this film. The famous, I love you, I know, from the galaxy's greatest pairing ever, Han and Leia. May the force be with you. Use the force. May the galaxy far, far away. And of course, Luke, I am your father. But I do want to take a moment more than a moment, to just express how important Leia is to me, and I'm sure to many other women out there. Um, I've admired her for so long now, um, her wit, her intelligence, her leadership skills, her ability to think on her feet. Leia is the one running the rescue in A New Hope. She's the one saving the- Leia is ultimately the one saving the galaxy. In Return of the Jedi, Jabba the Hutt tries to reduce Leia to simply being a sex object, but she remained unbroken and defiant, and she single-handedly defeated her enslaver. She remained undiminished. Leia wasn't and isn't there to be seduced by the hero, which is so common in many action films, even still today. She is smart, she is sarcastic, and she's completely all her own, and she never apologizes for who she is or where she com comes from. She is royalty. Let's not forget that. But she doesn't let that doesn't let that stigma get in her way ever. You know, uh, Leia showed us that you can be feminine and you can still be strong and still be so undeniably self-reliant. Um, all of our lives, girls. They really, they hear, oh no, you can't do that, you're a girl. Or, men make the plans, not the women. And here's Leia. She uses a droid to send a message. She schemed the entire thing. She ultimately stood up to the most terrifying dark ruler, Darth Vader. She, Leia grabs a blaster. Um, she thinks on her feet. She utilizes whatever was around to save herself and everyone else around her. She didn't stand by and wait for the men to take over. She didn't wait to be rescued. Force Awakens, Leia is a general. 
she's still fighting against um, the First Order. And she's leading a huge force. She's still so, so resilient and so stubborn and so self-reliant. Um, <clears throat> even with all the pain and all the trauma she has endured, uh, she still rises and she still does what she feels called to do and she does what she is best at. She follows her heart with every move that she makes. When Leia, when Leia is first introduced to Lando, she simply says, Leia. Not Princess, not Senator Organa, Leia. And I think that's so interesting because it's like she has these important titles but she just wants to be known as Leia herself. You know what I mean? I just think that's really something that we should be celebrating. That is one of my favorite moments ever. And not to mention another great moment. She helps organize the evacuation of Hoth um, to save countless rebels and she's standing in the middle of these a bunch of rebel pilots, her, her rebel pilots essentially, and she's giving them or an order and she says, good luck. And they all listen to her without even a doubt in their mind that, that that is who they should be listening to, that that is their leader. And they all listen to her so intently too, she never skips a beat. Leia is unlike any other princess. Leia is captured by Darth Vader, she witnesses the destruction of her home planet, but she never gives up any information regarding the Rebel Alliance, and she doesn't even flinch when she is threatened with death. She, Leia is a character worth celebrating, especially when in the presence of so many commanding male figures. There aren't many princesses out there who can stand up to torture, who aren't afraid of death, and, you know, lead a rebellion. And I'm not about to spill what all Leia goes through in The Force Awakens. Let's just say she is the strongest female character I can think of besides Lana Winters. But um, anyway, I have seen The Force Awakens a few times now and I cannot get over how brilliant it is. The humor, the characters, the new characters, um, and the old ones. Like, this is, is a dream come true, it really, really is. Like, being a longtime Star Wars fan, this was simply, uh, I can't even, I get emotional thinking about it because it just worked out so well. And I was, I know a lot of people were worried about it. I even was too, that it wasn't going to live up to the hype. But it did, everything just really, really worked. Leia is a general, I will say that because everybody knows that now. Duh. And we have a new female lead in town, Rey, um, Skywalker, or Solo, what, you said that, uh, Rey is complex, she's a hero, she doesn't need saving, she resents the idea of ever needing any help, and I love that, I love that about her, she's strong, she's independent, she's so loyal, Rey is so, so loyal, and Rey is, emo is emotional at times, she's still sensitive, Ray is like this massive ball of strength, will, vulnerability. But the thing I love most about Ray is her confidence. Ray is a leader. Ray is a hero, and Ray is extremely important. And I don't want to give a lot away because I know some people still haven't seen the film, but I just think she is a force to be reckoned with. And I just, I love Star Wars, and I love how the women in this this franchise, though, they always make such a lasting effect, and it's so nice as a young woman, and even little ones, little girls get to look up to women like General Leia Organa Solo and Rey. Rey's the new leader, and she, you know what? At times, Leia did have to sit on the sidelines, which shouldn't have happened, but it did happen, and Ray never does. Ray is a leader in this. Ray is. Ray and Leia are both just as important as every single male, char male character in this franchise. And I really, really love the way that J.J. Abrams, the director, utilized her strength, and utilized her vulnerability, and utilized. The, for, the force within her 
to make her such a captivating character. Yeah, so that's my spill on Star Wars. If you haven't seen The Force Awakens yet, go see it. Um, and that's my spill. Thank you again, Josie, for asking me to talk about this amazing franchise and these amer amazing characters. And may the Force be with you, always. Thank you, Whitney. May the Force be with you. So, I'm going to talk about The Force Awakens. And honestly, going into The Force Awakens, I didn't want to have too high of expectations. Because, I mean, obviously when someone new is taking over one of your favorite franchises, you get a little worried. Um, I'm not a fan of the prequels. Um, I have many reasons why. I don't like them. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with uh, the third film. Um, because I think it's the best done one. But I feel like... Lucas's thing was that he always wanted the prequels to be made in a time where he could have the technology to do so, but I think he got too carried away, and uh, it was far too cheesy, and it was too much of what can I show off visually than, than the heart and the, the, the real passion of the original Star Wars films. Like, it just, it lacked the magic, and it was too much of how many characters can we shove in here? And, and how many cool new ships and how much can we do? And the thing that bothers me is George Lucas is now saying like he thinks that the new film is too retro and you know he, he doesn't really like it. And I, I think Lucas honestly just has a problem with the pre or with the new film because the prequels get so much shit. And you know this is part of his vision. I mean any artist is gonna be hypercritical and you know of, of people taking over their work and anything but at this point it's like he had kind of killed his own franchise he had kind of lost the heart of it I feel and um the heart is back and that's the, the force is literally awakened and one of the biggest arguments people have about this film is that oh it's just a recycling of a new hope it's just the same thing and it's like are you stupid a new hope is a recycling of every hero's journey story ever I mean, Lucas himself said that it's um, many stories, including The Wizard of Oz. Think about it. So using the argument that an, an, um, The Force Awakens is just a ripoff of A New Hope, A New Hope is just a ripoff of pretty much any hero story ever, all the way back to Greek mythology, the Bible. Come on, guys. Get a better argument. Um, other people say that Rey is too too talented, that she's got too much going for her, that she's a Mary Sue, that she's a whole bunch of other things. But then... What about Luke? Why don't we stop and think about the the Skywalker men? Luke and Anakin, both of them were talented um, beyond what they were, you know, technically capable of. People are judging Rey saying, how can she fly? All she's done is take apart these ships. She knows old ships better than anything. She has scavenged, you know, these, these giant beasts that were in these epic wars, you know, of like Return of the Jedi and Empire and so for people to say oh well how does she do these things it's not like she was living in a box it's not like she was a freaking potato she had to sit there and and find something to do and in her spare time she's learning everything she can from these remains of these ships she's on a scavenger ship all she knows is ships so for them to be judgmental of her ability to fly is it, it's just like use common sense start over if you're going to make an argument against this film, at least use common sense. Get a better argument. I mean, the whole, everything I've heard can be argued with common sense. Um, in my opinion, I thought the film, like I said, it breathed new life into Star Wars. I mean, not that Star Wars ever really dies, but I just feel like so many fans had a, such a bad taste in their mouth because of the prequels. And it really just... They, they, the prequels have become such a joke in the fandom and like you know we got these horrendous characters that were just I don't even want to get into how much like <laughs> I hate some of these characters and they're like complete like uh, racial stereotypes it's just disgusting and like George Lucas gets so huffy about people judging the films and then some, there's some Star Wars fans now that are that don't like the new film so they're suddenly super defensive of the prequels and it's like make up your mind guys again use common sense in your arguments please like i just i'm, I'm laughing at people at this point for their their arguments against this film which honestly there's not that many um most people have really enjoyed this film 
And I just think it, like I said, again, for like the 50th time, it breathes new life into the franchise in a, in a new way. And, and having a, a female centerpiece is so interesting because Leia never really got to be the centerpiece. I mean, she's Luke Skywalker's twin sister and, and people are like, oh, she's not force sensitive. You bet your ass she's force sensitive. Do you forget what happens in Empire Strikes Back? Watch the end of the damn film. Anyway, Leia is force sensitive too and she never got to showcase that. I mean, in the extended universe, we got a taste of it here and there. And I mean, in the extended universe, we almost pretty much got a taste of Kylo and um, Rey as well. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. I, I, I mean, actually, you know, if, you've, if you're watching this, you've probably seen The Force Awakens. Um, and if you're familiar with the extended universe, um, Kylo and, and Rey could technically be Jason and Jaina uh, solo. I mean, we don't know Rey's parentage for sure, but it's like she's almost like a, a taste of that. So it's almost like they gave us a, a slight homage to the extended universe, even though it's no longer canon. And so that was really cool because for me, I was obsessed with the extended universe because I always wanted more about Han and Leia and Luke. I didn't really, I never really wanted the prequels. Like it was cool. Like I like Anakin's story. I don't like the acting of Anakin. And I mean, I don't know. It was, I, I just keep dumping on the prequels, but like I said, I really don't like them. Um, but like, I. And for a long time, all I had was the extended universe, even before the prequels, you know, I had the comics and the books. So I've always really liked the extended universe. So The Force Awakens is kind of like a touch into that, but in a, a new way. And uh, The Force Awakens also has um, a, a woman lead character. We have a, a black character. We have a Hispanic character. And these are the three, you know, main characters of this. This is so phenomenal for sci-fi, for Star Wars. This is, it's huge. And it's, it's something that I've wanted for so long. It's something that I can't even imagine for, you know, young black men or young Hispanic men, what, what their happiness. But, f you know, for me, for having Ray, it's, it's honestly something I wanted forever as a little girl. It's something that was so important for me. And, and Daisy, I just, I hope she realizes just how important she is and how many lives she's changing just with this character uh so many of my friends and i just wish we had ray when we were little girls like i can't express that enough we had leia but if we could have had ray if leia could have been able to be ray if she could have been able to use her force powers and be able to it just not be in the shadow of men it could have been amazing for us and and that's why the force awakens is so important that's why ray is so important that's why finn is so important that's why Poe Dameron is so important. And that's why, you know, having Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill back is so important. You know, fuck ageism, fuck racism, fuck sexism. Star Wars is annihilating that with The Force Awakens. And, and that is, is so huge. Like I said, for everything, not just for Star Wars, but for sci-fi in general, for all of us. And it's such a huge deal. And it's, it's such an amazing thing to be a Star Wars fan and witness this and and not be disappointed by The Force Awakens. It was it was magical. Um, I've seen it six times so far. Um, I'll probably be on seven this weekend. And yeah, it's 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 a beautiful film. It's it's well written. It doesn't play too heavily into special effects, and that's one of the reasons I love it. It's, I mean, BB-8 is he's not digital, and that's so it makes me so happy that like it's it's like the magic of the original Star Wars films, and and you just you can't beat that. Really, BB-8? You liked this episode? You learned a lot? That's awesome. Good to know. Yay! Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Force Friday. BB-8 and I, uh... Really? We really, really appreciate your viewership, and tune in next time for Mental Health Monday. May the Force be with you.